Hello everyone, we are Spritz Group from uh, University of Padova and today we are going to present fake news spreader profiling through behavioral analysis. In this presentation we are going to see the problem formulation regarding the fake news and fake news spreader, the introduction to the task of PAN, then we are going to show the uh, methodology proposed to solve this uh, issue and presenting the results and finally some consideration and conclusion of our work. The problem of fake news is something that is not new at all and we can find proofs of uh, fake news also from decades and decades ago. However, with the uh, massively use of social networks, uh, the fake news are spreading and reaching a broad area of the population very fast and quick. The topic that usually involve fake news are something that are very popular and for example uh, the political fake news where we have a, a very big issue on the US political election in 2016 but also nowadays with the problem of uh, COVID-19 uh, with the vaccines. Another example that I show here is um, from CNN from a couple of days ago and where a lot of people from an organization start spreading misinformation regarding uh, the fires that are hitting the Oregon. So fake news start being a very popular problem in the research area where researchers start using a lot of different techniques to try to tackle the problem uh, using data mining techniques, natural processing, but also deep learning. However, this is still an open problem. From the state of the art so far, we can learn a lot of uh, useful things. For example, uh, one opportunity is to detect in these early spreading stages the fake news, since uh, uh, several researchers uh, identify that uh, fake news spread with a different timeline compared to the uh, normal news. And the early detection of uh, this can uh, tackle the problem a lot, so uh, limiting the impact of a fake news. Another very uh, particular thing is the uh, multiple domain, where fake news are not just text, but they involve other sources such as images and videos. So to identify the fake news, we need to uh, use all of the information as possible to identify how to detect and solve this problem. And in this particular paper and presentation, we are going to present the spreader identification, which are the people that spread fake news. In particular, the task is on Twitter account, where we have 600 of unique account split in between 300 English and 300 Spanish. And for each account, we have 100 of tweets per user. Finally, each account is labeled as spreader or not, and uh, the classes are balanced. We want to highlight the fact that the data set is anonymized, so we have no information about the real account or other external information such as uh, URL, but also mention uh, or uh, uh, retweets information. So all of this inf external information that would help us to link uh, uh, the spreading are uh, anonymized. Given this, we thought that the goal of the uh, organizer was to rather understand a pattern in the tweets of uh, uh, spreader rather than to detect a fake news on a, uh, individual, uh, from an individual tweet point of view. So we start uh, thinking of what could be uh, very challenging and our goal was to uh, identify other uh, set of features that are, were not used so far to uh, distinguish and discriminate these two uh, group of people, which are fake news spreader and not spreader. And what we did is to investigate the role of big five personality trait uh, in the task. Uh, the big five is a set of personality traits that uh, a person can be uh, linked to, and this uh, involves a lot of different things, for example, the uh, being open, 
of new experiences, but also the organization in our daily life, and if we are friendly or not, and all of this kind of personality. We found that uh, IBM offered an amazing tool called Watson Personality Insight, which given a corpus, so a text written by a specific uh, person, we can extract this uh, personality and also other small subset of traits. And in total, we, have, we can extract 54 features. Another point that uh, is very interesting is that Watson gave us the opportunity to work with different languages, such as English and Spanish. And given this, it seemed to us that this is perfect for our task. So we then use uh, those 54 features uh, combined with other, uh, let's say, uh, classic stylistic feature that can summarize some properties of a given Twitter account. For example, uh, first of all, if it's English or a Spanish account, uh, giving us the property of having a cross-language model, but also other stylometric features such as the diversity score among the tweets, uh, which is just like a jacquard similarity of uh, the words used in the various tweets, also the, re the average readability score or other average statistics such as the uh, <coughs> average of URL per tweet, the average uh, number of punctuation per tweet, etc. The methodology that we use can be uh, summarized with this very simple pipeline of uh, three steps. So given a Twitter account and uh, uh, some tweets, we extract a set of features uh, containing both psychological traits and stylistic features. And then we use some uh, very simple supervised, supervised machine learning technique to uh, classify if a Twitter account is uh, a spreader or a legitimate account. We experiment with a, a set of uh, <coughs> very simple machine learning models such as the random forest, the decision tree, support vector machine, and KNN. And uh, uh, we first of all use a repeated nested cross validation with five inner folds to identify the best model among of these. And then we uh, use the entire data set given to us to uh, search the best hyperparameter of the winning model using a five-fold cross-validation, which in our case was the random forest. The random forest gave us a training accuracy, uh, average training accuracy of 87% and a test accuracy of 74% in the cross-validation, while on the task we have uh, uh, something close to 70%. So first of all, we were not super happy because this seems an uh, overfitting pattern, but this can be explained by uh, some stuff like that. <coughs> the, the data set were uh, kind of small because we are working from a account point of view rather on tweet point of view. So in total, we have uh, 600 of accounts. So uh, in conclusion, um, we think that uh, fake news spreader and fake news is still an open problem. But however, we found that psychological features can help to uh, identify and to uh, enforce the uh, feature space to tackle and address this problem. We believe that in uh, future work, future direction could be the identification of other orthogonal features rather to identify uh, and train powerful machine learning model. So we should focus on the extraction of new set of features that explain the behavior of um, fake news spreader. Thank you for your attention.